Welcome to our lecture online. When we look at spiral galaxies, we will notice that some of them have a unique feature. The unique feature is that the central bulge tend to have a rectangular shape. And since that rectangular shape looks a lot like a bar, we call them barred spiral galaxies. And they are unique to regular spiral galaxies in several ways. Another way that's very unique about barred spiral galaxies is that they typically only have two spiral arms one on each end of the bar. And so when you take a look at a picture like this, and I believe that this is a picture of NGC 1300, which is a beautiful barred spiral galaxy, you can see that the central bulge looks rectangular in shape. We have one spiral arm coming off the one end and the other spiral arm coming off the other end. Notice that for barred spiral galaxies, the typical combination of stars, the central bulge having that orangey color, indicates that it's consistent mostly of K and M type stars, older population two type stars. And then the spiral arms, they have a lot of blue in them. Also, they have a lot of red region, regions indicating that there's still a lot of nebulas containing a lot of gas and dust throughout those arm regions. But because of the blue color, you can see that there's still a lot of star formation, recent star formation taking place because all that blue has to come from large O and B type stars. And those are stars that don't live very long, maybe maximum of 50 to 100 million years. And so you know that since there's a lot of blue there, there's a lot of new stars, new star formation still taking place, just like with regular type of spiral galaxies. Now, what we think is happening, and we have reason to believe, is that regular spiral galaxies tend to become barred spiral galaxies. Now, what's interesting is that our own Milky Way galaxy is one of those barred spiral galaxies. We finally were able to figure that out. But notice that currently about two-thirds of all spiral galaxies are indeed the barred spiral galaxy type. So they're becoming quite common. And when I say becoming, is because it wasn't always like that. When we go back in time about 8 billion years ago, and of course we can do that by looking far into the distance in the, in the, in the universe, we recognize that back then only about 10% of these spiral galaxies were barred spiral galaxies. Looking back two and a half billion years ago, two regions a little bit closer to us, then we recognize that about a quarter of all the spiral galaxies were barred spiral galaxies. And currently when looking at the regions close to us now, we recognize that there's about 65%, about two thirds of all galaxies, of all spiral galaxies are indeed the barred spiral galaxy. Now we've run some computer simulations and we've noticed that when we do that, we see there's a tendency that the over time that spiral galaxies will indeed become barred spiral galaxies. So we see that as a natural evolution in the universe that eventually most if not all spiral galaxies will indeed become the barred spiral galaxy type. It's kind of interesting. Now also what we need to recognize is if we look far back in time using the Hubble Space Telescope, we've taken some extreme detailed pictures from far far away about 13 billion years ago we recognize that there was about two trillion galaxies in the universe. Now, because of galaxy collisions, they've combined into fewer and bigger galaxies, so that today there's an estimation of about 200, maybe 250 billion galaxies throughout the visible universe. Remember, this is just a visible universe. There's probably far more galaxies beyond the regions where we can no longer see because it's too far away. But in the visible universe, we think there's about 200 billion galaxies today, so that means that Roughly, on average, 10 galaxies became a single galaxy because of all these galaxy collisions. And we believe that the big spiral galaxies were the result of those galaxy collisions. Now, of course, the bigger the galaxy becomes, the more gravitational attraction to that galaxy, the more likely that smaller galaxies will get pulled in to the bigger galaxies. And even big galaxies tend to collide together. Turns out that our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are on a dance and slowly we're getting closer and eventually in about one and a half to four billion years we estimate the two galaxies will collide and when that happens probably become one single galaxy. It is also believed that these galaxy collisions were probably the reason why some of these galaxies became spiral galaxies by ripping each other apart through the collision and by moving material around in such a way that, it be, that that material swirled around beyond the central bulge of the original galaxies. So again, we're not sure. 
we see galaxies in collision, of course, that process takes millions and millions of years, so we can't really tell from the pictures that those galaxies were formed into spiral galaxies because of the collisions. But certainly we know a lot of collisions, billions upon billions of collisions have occurred, turning the older galaxies into the more familiar current galaxies. But bar galaxies are an evolutionary process. There weren't a lot of them around a long time ago, as you can tell, eight billion years ago, there weren't that many, and now there's far more bar galaxies than regular spiral galaxies. So, who knows, if we come back a few billion years from now, almost all of them will have turned into barred spiral galaxies. And that is the story on barred galaxies. Do they have any galaxies that's in the middle of collision right now? Like yes, yeah, we have galaxies that are in the middle of collisions. Like the antenna galaxies, for example, are two galaxies that are currently in a collision. Now, Collision is not like two cars colliding with each other. They just kind of move around each other. Sometimes they move through each other, and of course, since the stars are so far apart, it's more of a gravitational collision rather than actually head-on collisions between the stars. But they do change dramatically in shape, and you see the elongation of the tails of the galaxies when that happens. So yeah, we, we, can, we can infer quite a bit from the pictures that we've seen. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, there's always this, this curiosity, of course. I highly doubt it that a billion and a half years from now there still will be people on the Earth. But if there were, and we're still thriving and living on the Earth, and we're in the process of colliding with the Andromeda Galaxy, what would happen to our solar system? Probably not a lot. But it could be that if a star passes very close to our star, that because of gravitational attraction that the planets might be pulled out of their orbits and that Earth may end up in a different orbit, which would be, of course, catastrophic if that were to happen. But that's so far from now. Although I did read that um, about a million and a half years from now, again, far into the future, uh, they expect that a star will move through our Oort cloud, which means that many of the comets that are in the Oort cloud may get kicked out of orbit and may, may be coming streaming into the inner solar system. And when that happens, the Earth may get pummeled by a bunch of comets, maybe some big ones. So that's in our future. What star is that? I don't know the name of it. I don't remember. I don't know uh, the name, but I do remember saying that there's a star in its way that's just going to pass past the Oort cloud in about a million and a half years from now. So that's a good question. I should look it up.